Hello and welcome to the video. TBS have just released an entire range of CAN bus related devices. Everything from sensors like GPS to powered units to things like current sensors to things like uh, airspeed sensors. These are all on the website now. Now, I've been aware that these have been coming for a little while. I've personally been quite excited about it. Why? Well, CAN bus or drone CAN, depending on what you want to call it, has been around for quite a long time particularly the large builders building large complicated models use it to make sure that the signals get where they need to be and it also dramatically simplifies the wiring in these larger models however it's starting to creep down into the hobby based side as well and a lot of the hobby based flight controllers that we're starting to get now have some kind of drone can connection on the side what is drone can well very basically it's a four wire connection there's a power and ground there's a signal high and a signal low it's a technology that's been around for a very long time used extensively in the automotive industry so if you have a relatively modern car there's probably a CAN bus system inside the car that's how all the sensors things like your O2 sensor things like your throttle position sensor those kind of things are all connected via these kind of systems but because we have this stuff arriving in the hobby, and you'll have noticed it on things like the all-in-one flight controller that I looked at recently, we put in the TBS Chapito, uh, great wing by the way, if you haven't got one, check that out. Now the support is there in things like Ardu Pilot, so Ardu Plane, Ardu Copter, Ardu Rover, Ardu whatever. So that's widely used, and you'll probably come across other GPSs in other videos that I've done that are CAN bus connected. That's where most of us have bumped into it first. But as we go forward, I fully expect that more and more of us in the hobby will start to use CAN bus inside our models in a more meaningful way. So I was lucky enough to be sent uh, pre-production units of these to have a look at and have a play with. So I thought I would go through and just give you a whistle-stop tour of the new stuff that's out. This is quite interesting because historically, Vendors like Maytech and others have been the go-to for professionals for things like these devices. So it's kind of fun to see TBS throwing their hat in the ring. The first one to talk about is the TBS Drone Can Splitter. This includes a 4 amp BEC. So this is similar to the kind of hubs that you see inside other kits, but this actually also provides power for the Drone Can connected devices as well, which is very handy. Typically you'll find one of these kind of in the root of each wing with everything that's in the wing connected via the can connections and it provides the power that's needed too. So the input voltage for this is 3 to 12 S. It's going to output a nice 5 volts at a 4 amps maximum. Maximum output per connector is about 1.5 amps. Weighs about 12 grams. 5 CAN connectors. All the CAN connectors in this stuff is the same. So they're all JST GH 4 pin 1.25 millimeter connectors. XT30 connector for the power. And you also have solder pads as well if you want to do it that way rather than use the connectors. Size on this is 44 by 25 by 8 millimeters and you use these all over the place this is actually quite a nice unit that would power all of the can devices to a maximum of four amps if you need a little bit more power then there is the tbs drone can 20 amp power supply now this again will take 3 to 12 f input it'll output 5 volts at 4 amps similar to the device we've just looked at it'll also output 12 volts at 4 amps and 9 to 16 volts at a whacking 20 amps four voltage sensors on it weight is 63 grams two can connectors one serial connector, one SWD connector, same JSTGH four pin connectors, the 1.25 millimeters, an XT30 for the power input, and also solder pads too. Size is 61 by 40 by 15 millimeters, and it has a current sensor on here. Because it has different sensors, then there is going to be a little bit of RD pilot setup, and all of that is in the manual, so you can see how you need to set up things like the courage and voltage sensing so that you can read all that stuff from the device. 
Next one then is the TBS drone can 150 amp hole sensor. So the idea is this goes around typically the positive lead coming from the power supply and that allows you to measure the current that's flowing through it via the magnetic field that's created. So the sensor is a hole sensor and it will read from 0 to 150 amps. Input voltage is 4.5 to 5.5 volts. Most people are going to run it on 5 volts. Sensitivity is 12 millivolts per amp, weighs about 7 grams, 2 can connections, most of the ones that have 2 can connections allow you to daisy chain through them, 1 serial, 1 SWD, same JST GH4 pin, 1.25 millimeter connectors and also solder pads too. Size of this is 35 by 22 by 22 millimeters, perfect for those high current applications where you don't have to then worry about having very high powered current sensors uh, also all the settings for it are within the manual and also which way round you need to install it to make sure that it's detecting the current in the right way next one then is a sensor this is the tbs drone can airspeed sensor again powered from four and a half to five point five volts most people are going to power it at the five volts nominal that most can stuff runs on it'll measure up to 100 meters a second that equates to about 360 kilometers an hour or 223 miles an hour accuracy is plus or minus two percent only weighs four grams two can connections one serial connection one swd and one i squared c same jst gh pins for the can bus stuff and solder pads too does mean that uh, well as providing the can bus outputs it also provides i squared c support which means that you have a choice of how you want to connect it size of this is 35 by 22 millimeters Again, configuration for how this is all set up is inside the manual. This is the TBS DroneCan PWM board, allows you to connect either PWM controlled things like servos or OSC, or even D-Shot devices into your CAN network. So this is very handy if you have lots of PWM controlled devices remotely, then you can use this to power those and to mount them relatively far away without having to run eight lots of signal and power cables back to the various pieces. Input voltage, four and a half to 5.5 volts as all the rest. Eight servo outputs or eight D-shots. One D-shot UART, weights about four grams, two CAN connections, one serial, one SWD, and one I squared C. Same JST GH4 pin, 1.25 millimeter connectors for the CAN bus stuff and solder pads too. Size is 40 by 22 by six millimeters. And again, because it requires a little bit of configuration and setup here so that you make sure that the right things are being sent up to the board, that information is in the manual. The only other thing that's been released, the TBS Drone Can GPS module, that is very similar to lots of GPSs that I've had in already that connect via CAN bus. And that allows you to dramatically simplify the wiring to your flight controller, just having everything connect into CAN bus and then just running the CAN bus around. The big challenge with the more things you connect into the CAN bus system is making sure that everything has adequate power. So things like the drone can splitter with a 4 amp BEC and also the much chunkier power supply with a 20 amp rating are very handy to have to make sure that everything is powered and has available current and the 5 volts is nice and steady. So it's really interesting that TBS are getting into this market in such a big way. Lots of their flight controllers have CAN stuff on them. So things like the all-in-one unit that I put inside my TBS Chipito, but also things like the Lucid H7 Wing have a couple of CAN connectors as well. I think part of that is because TBS have a good relationship and work closely with the Ardu Pilot developers. And when you're using Ardu Pilot, CAN bus is becoming a much more common way to connect both remote devices, sensors, and other things as well. But also we're starting to see CAN bus creep down into more of the hobby grade stuff. So it's great that TBS are offering us a way to get hold of this technology in a relatively easy way. Let me know if you want me to do more videos about CAN bus and explain how it all works. I've already done a couple. I'll put links down below so you can go and check those out. But if you are building large professional models where you have long cable runs, CAN bus is a fantastic way to be able to get your signals around the model safely cleanly and without having to put lots of copper inside the model 
Thank you for watching my video. Check out the playlist and adding Painless 360 to your search terms will help you find my content. If you haven't done so already, please hit the like and subscribe button. It helps a lot. You can support the time I spend here answering questions and helping others by using the links in the video description.